Today, it's all about pliers. Hi guys, Deb from Aussie Mail here. Welcome to our Chainmail Basics videos. Today I'm going to talk to you about pliers. Um, obviously I can't cover all pliers. I'm going to feature mostly the pliers that we sell here at Aussie Mail. But I'll also be um, talking about um, some hints and some tips and some things you should um, know before purchasing pliers. Alright guys, let's get into it. Okay, so here's a quick overview of the pliers that we sell here at Aussie Mail. Uh, we mostly sell Lindstrom RX pliers, pliers from the Zuron range, Beadsmith's wire worker pliers, and their um, basic ergo handle pliers. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to discuss is the length of the plier handle. Now, I feel this is um, fairly important for comfort of the mailer. So, personally, I go for the longer handled pliers. The reason I do this is twofold. One of them is, this is a, a shorter pair of pliers, and in my hand, and I've got a, a fairly average size hand, it's not particularly large or particularly small, I don't believe, but when I hold this plier to mail, the end of the pliers hit in here in my palm, okay? And if you're doing a particularly long session of mailing, or even working with a metal that's a little bit more difficult, needs a little bit more pressure, I find that this creates a sore spot here in my hand. And I don't like it. I, I don't want my hands to be hurting. So my preference is not to buy something quite this small. I mean, if your hands are smaller, this might be a perfect size plier for you. I mean, they're, they're much lighter, obviously, than the longer handle pliers. Um, but it's just, it's not my, my thing. So I like to go for a longer pair of pliers. You can see when I hold this, that this end here is not smacking me in the middle of my palm. Um, it's running all the way down to the edge of my hand. So I don't have any point putting, you know, one point putting pressure on, on my hand at any time. The other benefit of the longer handle pliers is they give you better leverage um, and especially when working with the heavier metals or the, the stronger metals such as stainless steel um, or even your jewellery brasses in the thicker gauges, um, you'll get less fatigue using um, a plier that's got a longer handle than generally than one that's got a much smaller handle. So most of my pliers that I use have the longer handles. These are my favourite pliers, the Lindstrom's and the Zuron's. These are the ones that I use daily and it can change depending on what I'm doing. But you can see in both cases with these pliers that this end is not, when I, when I actually mail, is not digging in to my hand at all. Especially not the Lindstrom's. The uh, Zuron is bordering on the edge of um, being long enough but I still find that I don't develop the sore spots in my hands that I do with pliers like this. The other set of pliers that we sell in Aussie Mail are these ones. These are part of our basic Chainmail starter kits and again they're a little bit shorter. Um, I personally don't use these ones but with the nice big padded handles um, I find that they're um, not too bad. They do hit me a little short in my palm, but they're a great uh, plier to start with to see uh, what you like. They've got the um, ergo handles, so nice big padded handles to help with fatigue in your hands. Um, but again, as I said, I generally don't use these. So my first consideration when I'm looking for pliers is the length of that plier handle and where that plier handle is going to hit me in my palm. The next thing I would look at from a comfort point of view is the covering that is on the pliers. Okay, so as I said, uh, 
Lindstrom's are my favorite pliers. This particular pair of Lindstrom, so I worked for probably about, you know, 10 years or more using this pair of pliers. Okay, I've got two of these, they're about 12 years old, and as you can see, they've held up pretty well. The handles are still um, nice and comfortable. They do tend to get, because they're smooth, I find they do tend to get a little sweaty if you're working on a hot day and you're gripping your pliers in your hands constantly. Um, I do experience a little bit of rub off from them, but they're 12 years old and I haven't cleaned them in any way. So perhaps if I was a uh, better carer of my pliers and actually wiped down the handles, I wouldn't experience that rub off. Um, but these are great. I absolutely love the comfort of these particular handles. The next set of pliers that I really enjoy using are the Zurons. Now when I purchased these, I was concerned that the hard plastic was going to be too uncomfortable for my use. Okay, because it is a slightly shorter handle and it's a it's not a hard hard plastic but it's certainly not soft okay but um, I have never had a problem with these pliers hurting my hands I find them to be comfortable they're light they're very light which is also a bonus for them so you're not carting around a heavy pliers in your hands while you're mailing so surprisingly this handle also very comfortable uh, again our basic ones have as you can see the ergonomic handles very much a theme with the handles that we stock here with Aussie Mail um, nice thick padding gives you a lot of comfort um, doesn't produce too much hand fatigue when you use them and then these ones here which are the beadsmith wire workers come with um, padded foam handles which again are pretty comfortable unfortunately though they have made some changes with their padding and they seem to fluctuate back between the two types of handles and I, I don't know why unfortunately I'm not as thrilled with this um, wrapping that they use it's a little bit harder um, doesn't give me quite the comfort level that I was hoping for um, they're still not bad don't get me wrong they're still a really good plier we wouldn't stock them otherwise but I am disappointed in this particular handle here I think this foam one is much more comfortable so um, that's what I look for in the handles I, I'm not a real fan of uh, say pliers that have got this just this plastic covering over them especially if they fall into these very small pliers so my first ever set of pliers um, that I bought from the local craft store were small like this with that slippery plastic handle um, and they weren't particularly comfortable but they did the job until I decided what I wanted. But that's it guys, so that's handle coverings. Okay, so one of the next things I would then also look for in pliers are the types of springs that they use. One of the things that I am most fond of with my Lindstrom's is the spring system that they have, these bio springs. You can replace these, okay? You can pull them out of your plier and um, when they start losing their spring bank capability and you can replace them so there's um, no need to throw away your plier if it breaks you can also change the strength of the string spring back and which way you like that to be okay so these are not a cheap plier okay they're our top of the line pliers that we sell but like I said, I've owned this pair for 12 years, over 12 years now. And um, except for changing out this spring a few times, I haven't had a problem with them. Okay, so I love the spring idea in the Lindstrom RX pliers. The spring in the Zurons, although um, it's, it's extremely different than any of the other springs, you can see that it's this little contraption. It hides down in the handle of the plier 
okay and the different Zurons some of them have different springs but they all work the same way I've never had one of these springs break but I do understand from my readings that if you do have a problem with the springs if you contact Zuron directly they will be able to help you out with a new spring and you can just apparently take the handle off put the new spring in put the handle back in and Bob's your uncle you keep going along okay the other type of spring that you tend to see are these types that are in these two particular pliers okay these um, uh, uh, metal strips basically that are fitted inside the handles okay and as they come together you can see they push against each other and cause the handles to open and close now they work great when they work but one of the problems with this particular type of spring is metal fatigue and they can break okay so then you're stuck with a plier that you have to manually open and close yourself okay it doesn't spring back itself now some people might like that I don't um, I prefer to have that spring back mechanism in there um, you can't fix these easily once they break okay so um, it's not you know any one particular brand that has this problem but just that style of of spring so that's something you need to take into consideration when you're purchasing um, pliers is what type of spring they are and what type of life expectancy you can expect from them so I can't predict how long this spring is going to last um, I've seen some of them last for years and I've seen some of them break within a couple of months or, or even less um, so I try to avoid personally buying um, you know pliers that have that spring mechanism or spending a lot of money on pliers that have that spring mechanism uh, if it's a cheaper budget plier then I'm not so concerned about it but if I'm going to drop a lot of money on a pair of pliers I would like it to be with some sort of spring that I can replace but that's my take on that personally and then the next thing to take into consideration of course is the jaws of the pliers and what type of jaws there are okay so looking at I'll start with my favorites the Lindstrom's I'll show you what jaws are available so this is their chain nose plier this was their flat nosed and this is their bent nosed now I believe they may have some other noses but these are the three of the original pliers um, that we have in stock personally I've never used the bent nose plier I like and I have always liked my pliers to have a short stubby nose unless I'm you know working with the the wire workers and, and that's for a different reason but I prefer um, a shorter nose so I've never actually used this particular nose but it's got a beautiful pointy tip which can be very useful for getting into tight places uh, when you're mailing so it's always good to have pliers on hand that you may not use always but you never know you're going to have um, that one spot where you really need something that you need to get into um, I've used the chain nose ones which I absolutely love and funnily enough I've never actually used the flat nose ones either because I only ever used the chain nose uh, the chain nose I find um, you know they're great for getting into smaller places um, they're not so great if you're perhaps using a really thick gauge and I wouldn't use my Lindstrom's on stainless steel and if I am going to use them on stainless steel and I'm not saying I haven't but I have I would only use something in the 0.8 millimeter or 1 millimeter wire diameter range um, these are not heavy duty pliers okay guys don't use them for that sort of work recently well fairly recently uh, Lindstrom have bought out these two stubby nose pliers uh, the flat short flat and the what I call the oblique nose pliers 
these are my go-to pliers now I love 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 these they've got that beautiful stubby nose that I absolutely adore um, and the oblique gives you the ability to grip your pliers uh, without uh, grip your rings sorry without interfering with the other pliers I like to flip it over this way when I've got a really tight spot to get into um, I love using these pliers for 14 gauge or 1.6 millimeter wire diameter in bright aluminium um, they're really good for that I've used it all the way down to the 0.8 millimeter diameter wire um, but in those sizes, these uh, larger jaws can get a little tricky, which is when the Zurons come into play. So I probably grab for my Zurons most often. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you will see these used frequently. And my favorite combination is the chisel jaw with either uh, the short nose or the wide short nose so you can see that one is slightly wider than the other um, this one obviously for the finer wires I will grab this one if I'm using something a little bit thicker I'll grab this one but I always always have at least one chisel point in my hand or chisel nose in my hand and again you know you can grab a lot of the ring this way you can grab a little bit of the ring this way with the point um, I can't recommend these chisel oblique nose pliers enough. I think they're fantastic. They also have what they call their 90 degree bent nose. Now I'm generally a fan of bent nose pliers. This one I don't use a lot, I have to be honest, but I know a lot of mailers rave about it. Um, it does give you the ability to um, get down into a weave that's perhaps being a little tricky so as I said it's one of the pliers I don't use often but I keep because when I've had to use it it's been exceptionally helpful okay so that's the chisel nose I'm um, sorry the Zuron range the next one I would I like to use are the beadsmiths now the beadsmiths come in a few different noses as well They've got the chain nose, they've got the bent chain nose, and then they've got two different widths in their flat noses, so they've got a narrow and a wide, okay? I mostly used, or when I used to use these exclusively as my pliers, I would use a bent nose in my non-dominant hand, and I would use either the chain or a um, narrow flat nose. I don't use these pliers a lot now, especially since coming on board with the Zurons. But what I do like these pliers for is when I'm working in stainless steel. Okay, so although I can, um, I've been told that you can use the Zurons in stain with stainless steel, um, I prefer to go with these ones. They've got a slightly um, longer handle, a padded handle. It just gives me that little bit more comfort in something that I have to use a little bit more oomph in. I find then with the stainless steel that these wider flat nose become very helpful along with the bent nose pliers. But again, your mileage may vary and you may like a different combination, but that is what I found helps with um, with stainless steel for these so I don't work in stainless a lot anymore but when I do work in it this is what I grab okay and then I just want to go over the ones that we sell with our starter pack so they come with three pliers and again they've got the chain the bent chain and the flat nosed okay and my preference again would be to use the bent nose in my non-dominant hand that's the hand um, I don't know why that's the one I like and I've always used it with the note with the nose pointing up I know a lot of people use it with the nose pointing down whatever works for you okay guys whatever works for you what one person does doesn't make what you do differently wrong 
okay but that's my recommendation for starting out but if you buy our chainmail basics pack I'll put a link up here if you're interested um, you'll get all three of these and you won't have to make a decision which ones to use but that's the three noses that come in those and then of course you can come across some specialty pliers uh, these were pliers that we stocked at one stage and we don't stock them now but I just thought I would talk to you about them so these ones are armor pliers armor pl for armor making um, so definitely generally I wouldn't recommend them for jewelry making there is no fine finessing with these pliers they are heavy they are large the jaws are large but they're nice and short with a longer handle and they give you the leverage you need for the much thicker stainless steel stuff that's really hard to work with these are the pliers for that these ones can also be useful these duckbill pliers can also be useful when you're working with um, larger harder to move metals because there's such a big surface in the plier you can grab a large portion of that ring um, and get that grip, that all important grip that you need when you're working with harder, tougher metals. So, um, as I said, these are more specialty if you're working in armor. Uh, we specialize in jewelry on Aussie Mail, um, which is why we have a lot of jewelry related pliers. But I just thought I would throw these in there just for you to have a look at. So, as I said, they're a much bigger plier but very good for working with um, armor sized rings. Well, that's it guys. That's just a short rundown of just a few of the pliers that you can find in the chainmail world. I really hope it was of help to you. And uh, if you do have any other questions, let us know down below in the comment section, or if you want to tell us about your favorite plier, we'd love to hear about that because we're always on the lookout for some really, really sweet pliers. Alright guys, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, think about sharing it and if you want to help us and you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, hit the little bell while you're at it so that you get all the notifications when we go um, load up some new content. While you're here, we've got over a hundred videos here for you to check out, check some of those out and don't forget to give our store a little bit of love and um, see what we've got there especially in our pliers all right guys thanks again and i hope to see you sometime in the future bye